Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help to use Minute Math. Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're going to learn about adding positive and negative numbers, and we're going to find each sum. So if I was given this uh, expression, negative 7 plus 9. And I wanted to add them to that, negative 7 plus 9. Well, I take this negative 7, add a 9. What's the, the almost difference between that? Now, I like to actually flip them. So I like to uh, switch these around because it's addition. I can remove, uh, move them around. So I have 9 plus a negative 7. Order does not matter with addition. So negative 7 plus 9 is the same thing as 9 plus negative 7. And from there, well... Adding a negative is the same thing as subtraction, right? So 9 plus a negative 7 is 9 minus 7. 9 minus 7 comes out to just be 2. Okay. Negative 8 plus a negative 1. Okay. So I would start with negative 8. Now, it helps if we draw a number line here. So negative 8 right here. So left we have negative 9, negative 10, because those numbers are more negative. They're smaller to the left. We add negative 7, negative 6, now negative 5. And if we had the break here, we'd be at 0, then 1, then 2. Okay? But we're starting with negative 8 right there. Okay? So with negative 8, we want to add one more negative 1 to it. So we're going to move it to the left, one position, right? One unit. So we move to the left, one unit. That's negative 1. So negative 8 plus a negative 1 is our negative 9. It's right there. Negative 1 plus 5. And I wanted to add these together. Well, <clears throat> we know by the commutative property that we can flip negative 1 to 5. So I can rearrange this to be 5 plus a negative 1. And then, from here, we know adding a negative is the same thing as subtraction. So we have 5 minus 1 instead of 5 plus a negative 1. And 5 minus 1 is just 4. Negative 6 plus 12. If well, I was given negative 6 plus 12, I know by the commutative property that I can rearrange this to have it as 12 plus a negative 6. Okay? So by the commutative property, I rearrange it as 12 plus negative 6. Now we know that Adding a negative is the same thing as subtraction. So I can re I rewrite this to be 12 minus 6. So instead of 12 plus a negative 6, it's 12 minus 6. And we know that 12 minus 6 is 6. And there's our final answer. Negative 8 plus a negative 5. So if I had negative 8 plus a negative 5, then I want to add those together. So now here is where I want to use the number line. I start with negative 8. And I need to move to the left negative 5 direction, right? units, right? So in the direction of negative, 5 units. So we have negative 9, negative 10, negative 11, negative 12, negative 13, negative 14. Okay, should be helpful. So now we have negative 8 and we need to add Five units and zero is somewhere over here, right? Keeps going to zero, but we don't need that right now. So we start with negative eight. We need to move to the left five units. We have one, two, three, four, five, and there we have it negative 13. So we move to the left negative five units from negative eight. Negative eight plus negative five is negative 13, and there's my final answer. Now, what's also a little trick here if they're both negative and you know a negative plus a negative must be a larger, in a sense, larger quotation, negative number. It's the same answer as just positive 8 plus a positive 5, and to slap on the negative at the end. 8 plus 5 is 13. Negative 8 plus negative 5 is negative 13. 11 plus a negative 2. So we start with 11, and we want to add a negative 2. And this one's fairly simple. We know addition is the same, addition we're adding a negative number, it's the same thing as subtraction. So we have 11, and we need to subtract 2 essentially, right? Adding a negative is the same thing as subtracting, positive, so 
11 minus 2, and 11 minus 2 comes out to be 9. Now, if we wanted to see that on a number line, we start with 11 here. We start with 11, and we move to the left, add negative 2 units, 1 and 2, we come out with that final answer of 9. So either way works. We can convert the addition uh, of a negative to be a subtraction. That's fine. 11 plus negative 2 is the same thing as 11 minus 2, which is 9. Or we start with 11 and move to the left two units because we're adding a negative 2. 49 plus a negative 15. So if I had 49 plus a negative 15, well, this one's fairly simple. We have 49 plus a negative 15. That's the same thing as 49 minus 15. And 49 minus 15 is something that you probably already know how to do. Uh, 49 minus 15 comes out to be, uh, it's a 4 and a 3, and 34 is my final answer. 49 minus 15. If you do it here, 49 minus 15. 9 minus 5 is that 4. And 4 minus 1 is the 3. Okay. Negative 47 plus 30. Okay, negative 47 plus 30. So if I start with that negative 47, I like to visualize this on the number line. So we have negative 47, okay, and we're adding 30. Well, 30 is really broken up to 10 plus 10 plus 10, right? Uh, three tens in a row added. So if I have negative 47 and I add just 10 of them, right? If I jump 10 units, I have negative 37. That's a plus 10, right? Another 10 units to negative 27. That's another plus 10. We're almost there. One more plus 10, and we'll get to our answer. Right here, we jump again. Negative 27 plus another 10 is negative 17. And there is actually our final answer, negative 17. 49 plus negative 27. So if I have 49 plus a negative 27, we know that 49 plus a negative 27 is the same thing as 49 minus 27. And there we have it. And so we have 49 minus 27. So if I do the traditional way here, 49 minus 27 on the side, 9 minus 7 comes out to be 2, and 4 minus 2 comes out to be 2, and our final answer is 22. Negative 29 plus 9. This one I find easy to see with a number line. So if I have negative 29 here, okay, and I want to add 9 units into the positive direction, well, if I want to add 9 units to the positive direction, well, that's moving to the right, right? So we have negative 28, negative 1, negative 27, and I could write them all out. But what happens if I really add 9 more units to negative 29? That actually jumps all the way over here to negative 20, and that's adding our 9 units. Negative 29, 1 unit, negative 28, 1 unit, negative 27. We can see how the 9s match up here. Negative 29 plus 9 gives me that negative 20 as my final answer. My final answer is still negative, but it's larger than my original negative 29 from the beginning. 43 plus a negative 1. Well, 43 plus a negative 1. This one's actually very, very simple here. All right, we have plus a negative, so we have 43 Instead of plus a negative, we can do minus the positive 1. And this one becomes simple. 43 minus 1 is just 42. For 10, 10 plus a negative 2 plus 1. Okay? So we're reading from left to right here. It's all addition. Okay? So 10 plus a negative 2. Well, 10 plus a negative 2 is the same thing as 10 minus a 2. Right? So if you remember from before, so 10 plus a negative 2 is 10 minus a 2, and 10 minus 2 is just 8. I'm going to bring down that 1. So 10 plus a negative 2 comes out to be 8, right? 10 minus 2 is 8. And now we're left with, well, well what's 8 plus 1? 8 plus 1 is just 9, and there's our final answer. Negative 2 plus 11 plus 4. 
So negative 2 plus 11 plus 4. Well, negative 2 plus 11, that's the same thing as 11 uh, plus a negative 2, right? So I'm going to actually use a commutative property and switch these. So now we have 11 plus a negative 2 plus 4. Since they're all addition, we can apply that commutative property of addition here. So 11 plus a negative 2. Well, 11 plus a negative 2 is the same thing as 11 minus 2 plus 4. Well, what's 11 minus 2? 11 minus 2 is just 9, and we add 4 to that. And 9 plus 4 comes out to be 13, which is our final answer. 12 plus 7 plus a negative 4. Okay. Well, 12 plus 7 plus a negative 4, they're all addition. We can add left to right. So let's go 12 plus 7. Well, 12 plus 7 comes out easily to be 19. And then we bring down the negative 4. Well, adding a negative is the same thing as subtraction, right? So subtraction, same as adding a negative. So we have 19 instead of plus a negative 4, 19 minus 4. Well, 19 minus 4 comes out to be 15. And there's our final answer. Negative 7 plus 3 plus 9. We have three terms here. Well, negative 7 plus 3 plus 9, okay? And this one's actually fairly tricky. Since they're all addition, it doesn't matter which one you do first, okay? And so I'm actually, I'm actually, for this problem here, going to do the 3 plus 9 first. And the reason for that is that I don't necessarily like adding negative 7 plus 3 and maybe flipping it, subtracting, getting a negative number, and trying to add the 9. But I know I can add 3 plus 9 first, so I'm going to kind of get that out of the way. So negative 7, I'm going to leave that up here plus 3 plus 9, and that comes out to be 12, okay? So now I have 3 plus 9, which is 12. Well, I know I, the commutative property says I can flip uh, negative 7 and 12. So 12 plus a negative 7 is the same thing as a negative 7 plus 12. And this is what I like to see. So now I have 12 plus a negative 7. Well, 12 plus a negative 7 is the same thing as 12 minus 7. And 12 minus 7 is a much easier problem. 12 minus 7 comes out to be 5, and that is my final answer. Negative 1 plus 11 plus 5. So, first off, I, want to, I see the negative 1 plus 11 plus 5. In this problem, it really is where I flip to vote here, but I'm going to deal with 11 plus 5 first. We have all addition, so it really doesn't matter the order. I'm bringing down that negative 1. And I'm going to deal with 11 plus 5 here. 11 plus 5 is 16. Well, now we have negative 1 plus 16. Well, negative 1 plus 16 is one unit to the left. I'm not going to make us the, the switch and make it into you know, plus and negative to mean subtraction. But negative 1 plus 16, where 16 would move it to the left one unit with that plus and negative 1 here that's going on, in a sense. And so that comes out to just be 15. 2 plus 10 plus negative 10 plus a positive 10. And I wanted to add them all together. Now, I could always, since they're all addition, I can just read left to right here. But with addition, it really doesn't matter which one you add first. Okay? So I'm actually going to combine the 10 plus a negative 10 first. I'm going to leave these two on the outside where they are. So 10 plus a negative 10, well, that's easy. That's zero. So now we have 2 plus 0, which is a 10 plus a 10, right? It came together, plus this 10, and here, to the right. So now we have 2 plus 0 plus 10. Well, I don't really need the 0, so I have 2 plus 10 left. Now it becomes very simple. 2 plus 10 is 12, and there's my final answer. 10 plus negative 11 plus 5 plus a negative 5. Okay, so if I was going to 10 plus a negative 11 plus 5 plus a negative 5. Well, they're all addition, so let's go read left to right here. Now, hopefully you're getting better with uh, numbers like 10 plus a negative 11 and see what they come out to be. Well, 10 plus a negative 11 comes out to be uh, <laughs> negative 1. And we bring out a 5, and we add the negative 5 here. 
So 10 plus a negative 11 is the same thing as 10 minus 11, which is negative 1. Well, this one right here is pretty simple. I kind of I mean, move over here and deal with 5 plus a negative 5. Well, 5 plus a negative 5 comes out to be 0. So now we have negative 1 plus 0. And I always look for that. I always look for numbers that are uh, the same, just opposite as negative and positive, or other negative, and they can cancel each other out. So now we have negative 1 plus 0. Well, negative 1 plus 0 is just negative 1. And there's my final answer. 2 plus 6 plus a negative 7 plus 10. I'm going to add them all together. We'll start reading left to right. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to say 2 plus 7. Well, 2 plus 7 is 8. And I'm bring down a negative 7 plus a 10. And 8 plus a negative 7, well, it's 8 minus 7. 8 minus 7 is just 1. Gets very simple now. Well, 1 plus 10 is 11. And there we are. plus a negative 8, plus a negative 2, plus 1. So if we're given negative 5 plus negative 8 plus negative 2 plus 1. So since so they're all addition here, we, it really doesn't matter which one we do first necessarily. And so what I want to uh, deal with here is, well, I, I like to find ones that kind of match up that are numbers that are easy to add to. And at first I was thinking of the negative 5 and negative 8, but... I really uh, caught my eye was negative 8 and negative 2. And I know if I added those two together, I can get negative 10. So let's rearrange. Let's, let's do that first. We bring down the negative 5. And then we're going to add negative 8 plus negative 2. That's more in the negative direction, which is a negative 10. And then we have the plus 1. Well, now it gets a little simpler. We have negative 5 plus negative 10 first. Well, that's addition. So negative 5 plus negative 10, that's an easy one. They're in more in the negative direction, and it's kind of just like positive numbers, just make it negative, right? Because two negatives add up to be another negative. We have negative 15 plus 1, and now it's pretty simple, negative 15 plus 1. One removes it back one notch to the positive direction, but we're still negative, and we have negative 14 as my final answer. Negative 6.8. Plus a negative 1.9. I wanted to add them together. Now, this one's easy because they're both negative numbers. So we almost can treat them as if they're both positive numbers and know that two negative numbers added together are negative. So on the right here, if I, if I rewrite it out and say, okay, um, it's 1.8, negative 6.8 plus a negative 1.9. Well, I'm just going to treat it as if they're just both positive numbers. They're both moving towards that negative direction. Well, 8 plus 9 is at 7. Carry the 1. And we have 6 plus 1. 7 plus 1 is uh, 8. And we bring out the negatives because there's two negatives, right? Two negatives added together are still negative. And my final answer here is just negative 8.7. 2 plus D9 plus a negative 4.3. Well, the first thing I learn about here, or I think about, is is my final answer going to be positive or negative? And in this case, it's going to be negative. Negative 4.3 has more weight than two positive 2.489. I think it was like a tug of war a line, um, around zero. And if the negative is, is larger, it's going to be on the negative side when we get bring them together. And the, so the positive is larger, it's going to be on the positive side. But in this case, negative is larger. So my final answer is going to be negative. Now, to do this traditionally, um, the way I do it, okay, and it might be different than what your teachers teach you, to be honest, is I write it like this. And I will have my 4.3, and I will subtract from 4.3, 2.489. But I know that whatever my final answer is in this case, okay, um, I'm going to have to make it negative. So way it's going to appear, it's going to be positive. I'm going to rearrange it to be negative at the end. But I'm doing this, taking the 4.3 kind of, and subtracting the 2.489 from it. Well, I take my place values, 0 and 0 here. And of course, I can't do the 0 subtract not while I'm using this method. So I kind of have to bring over that 3, so that becomes a 2, 9, 10. There we go. And so now, 
Um, and that reason was nine is that had if I made a ten and then bring one over, but hey, uh, ten minus nine is just one. Nine minus eight is also one. And well, two minus four can do that one. So let's grab another one here. Uh, put a three up there. Make that a twelve. Now I have twelve minus four, which is eight. And we have three minus two, which is one. And we need to make that negative as our final answer, negative one point eight one one. And there is my final answer. Negative 4.7 plus 5.7. I want to add these together. So on the right hand side, I need to, uh, I'm going to add them together now. Uh, what's tricky with this, right? I look for the large number first, 5.7. And we know that by the commutative property, I could flip this over and I have a 5.7 plus a negative 4.7. And then that's the same thing, adding a negative, the same as subtraction. So 5.7 minus 4.7, which I know I can do here. So I have 5.7 minus 4.7. Okay. Well, 5.7 minus 4.7, this is fairly easy now. The 7s, all right, 7 minus, or 0.7 minus 0.7 is just 0. And 5 minus 4 is 1. And so my final answer here is just 1. Negative 5 plus a negative 7.1. And I wanted to add them together. Well, luckily, they're both negative numbers, so we have to move them to the, uh, there'll be more, a larger negative number when it's all said and done. So let's go rewrite it here. Let's go add them together, negative 7.1 plus a negative 5, and I'll put a point zero here, so it matches up. So we know our final answer is going to be a larger negative number, larger than either, either one of these will work more negative. Well, 0.1 plus 0 is just 0.1. Negative 7 plus 5 comes out to be negative 12. Or negative 7 plus a negative 5 is negative 12. So our final answer here is negative 12.1. And there we have it. So 3.9 plus 7.1 plus negative 7.8. And I wanted to add them together. Well, first I would look at these two numbers, all right? So I look at a negative 3.9 and 7.1. And I know that's the same thing as 7.1 plus a negative 3.9. I can bring down the plus a negative 7.8, okay? And I know that adding a negative is the same thing as subtraction. So 7.1 minus 3.9 plus a negative 7.8. Well, 7.1 minus 3.9, I can do that right here. 7.1 minus 3.9, okay? Well, the seven, I turned that to the six because uh, the one, I could have taken nine from it, but now I have 11. 11 minus nine comes out to be two, and six minus three is three. So now I'm left with 3.2 here, so I have 3.2, plus a negative 7.8. Well, I now can rewrite that to be 3.2 minus 7.8. And I can do that over here. Now, this is tricky, right? Because 7.8 is a more negative number, right? It's larger in the negative direction of subtracting a large number from 3.2. So our final answer is going to be negative, okay? So what we can do is take that negative 7.8 Okay, and subtract the 3.2 from it and kind of flip it around. Okay, imagine it's a positive 7.8 to get 3.2 from it, but we know our final answer has to be negative because 7.8 was larger than 3.2. 0.8 minus 2 is 0.6, 7 minus 3 is 4, but when I bring it over here, let's make it negative, where our final answer is negative 4.6. Negative 4.5 plus 4.9 plus 3.4. And I wanted to add these together. Well, my first step I'm actually going to do is bring together the 4.9 and 3.4. Since it's all addition, it really doesn't matter which one you do first. So I'm going to add the 4.9 and 3.4 first together. And so if I have a 4.9 plus 3.4 here, 
4.9, comes down to, okay, 3, carry the 1, right? Uh, 9 plus 4 is 13, carry the 1, put 3 down here. Uh, 1, 4, 3, uh, 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 3 is 8, and 8.3 is my answer here. And I'm going to bring down the negative 4.5. Well, by the commutative property, I can flip these two. So I have 8.3 plus a negative 4.5. And we know that adding a negative is the same thing as subtraction, so 8.3 here minus 4.5 replaced. And now I can do that math right here on the side. 8.3 minus 4.5. Well, 8.3 minus 4.5, the 3 is smaller than the 5, so let's make that 8 into 7. Put a 3 over here, uh, the 1 over there. Now I have 13 minus 5, which comes out to be oh, 7. 7 here. Uh, no, <laughs> eight. <laughs> it's an eight. Comes out to be eight. Well, we all make mistakes. Eight, I can't believe I made that one. Uh, seven minus four is three, and 3.8 is my final answer. Negative 2.1 plus a negative one plus a negative 7.6. Now I want to add them all together. Well, negative, they're all negative, okay? So since, since they're all uh, negative here, we know our final answer is also going to be negative because we're adding all these negative numbers. Well, pretty straightforward. Now, negative 2.1 plus a negative 1, we're adding in a negative direction. That's just a negative 3.1. And we bring down the negative 7.6, okay? Um, so... If you want to write it on the side, you can, but it's pretty easy. Negative 2.1 plus a negative 1 is negative 3.1. Well, if I want to add the negative 3.1 and a negative 7.6, since they're both in the negative direction, you just add it like if they're positive numbers, just make the final answer negative. So 0.6 plus 0.1 is 0.7, and negative 7 plus negative 3 is a negative 10. Negative 10.7 is my final answer. 0 0.85 plus a negative 2.4 plus 4.5. Okay? So I have 0 0.85 plus negative 2.4 plus 4.5. I'm going to combine my negative 2.4 and 4.5 first. So I'm going to rearrange using the commuter's property negative 2.4 and 4.5. So here's a 4.5 plus the negative 2.4. And we know that adding a negative is the same thing as subtraction. So 0 0.85 plus 4.5 minus 2.4. That's a decent looking thing. <laughs> Could be nicer. Um, so why did I do that? Well, I saw 4.5 was larger than the negative 2.4. And so I know when I add them together, it's basically subtraction, I wanted to still have positive numbers because I find it easier to deal with positive numbers. So since they were all over addition, I can I use I can use the commutative property here, and I can write it as 4.5 minus 2.4, because adding a negative is subtraction. So if I have 4.5 here minus 2.4, well, that's a little easier one to do. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4 is 0 0.1. And then we have uh, 4 minus 2, which is 2. And now I have 2.1 in my answer here, keeping everything positive. Right? It's nice to keep everything positive. So now I have 8, uh, 0.85 plus 2.1. So now I need to add these two together. Well, I have 2.1 plus 0 0.85. Now notice the placeholder here. There's a, an extra uh, digit, and so it goes up to hundreds. And so I'm going to put a 0 out there, because one, a 2.10 is the same as 2.1. Well, add them together. 0 plus 5 is 5. 1 plus 8 is 9. It's going straight down. And 2 plus 0 is 2. And so my final answer is 2.95. There we go. We have 5, uh, 5 thirds, no, 5.3, 5 thirds, plus a negative 7 fifths. Okay? So... <clears throat> When I add these two numbers together, I need to have a common base, right? A common denominator. So 3 and 5 are not common denominators. But I know that both 3 and 5 go into 15. 3 goes into it 5 times, and 5 goes into 15 3 times. So what I'm going to do is take 
five thirds and multiply it by uh, five fifths. Because five over five is just, is just one. And I'm going to take this negative seven fifths and multiply it by three thirds. Okay. So essentially, I'm just multiplying both sides here by one and any number times one if it's itself. But this allows me to have a new common denominator, uh, or a common denominator, not a new one. So 5 times 5, right, we multiply across the numerator is 25, and 5 times 3 is 15. So what that tells us here is that 25 fifteenths is the same fraction as 5 thirds. So then we're adding a, uh, well, negative 7 fifths, multiplied by 3 across negative 7 times 3 is negative 21, and 5 times 3 is 15. And now we succeeded because we have the same base. That's what we wanted, a common denominator. So now that we have a common denominator, we can add these two fractions. Okay? And when we add the fractions, the, common, the denominator is still the same. And we add across the numerator. Well, 25 plus a negative 24, or subtracting 24, is just 4. And so 4 fifteenths would be my final answer. 8 fifths plus a negative one-third. And I wanted to add them together. Well, I needed to find a common denominator. Now I know 5 and 3 both go into 15. 3, 5 times. Right? So I would multiply this by 5 over 5. And this side by 3 over 3. And 5, oops. Okay. Well, when we multiply these out, 3 over 3 times 8 over 5, we multiply across the numerator. 3 times 8 is 24, and 3 times 5 is 15. And so the fraction 8 fifths is the same as 24 to 15, which is unsimplified. Well, negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. Multiply across the numerator and multiply across the denominator, and we have 15. And now we have, because 3 times 5 is 15, now we have the same base. Since we have the same base, we can add these fractions together. The same base stays down here, 15, but the numerator is 24 plus a negative 5. We need to add those together, and we get 19. And so 19 over 15 would be my final answer. 24 plus a negative 5, or 24 minus 5 is 19. The base is the same. Make sure you keep the base the same. Negative 1 third plus negative three-fifths. I wanted to add them together. Well, I wanted to find a common denominator. And now I know three and five, the two denominators here that I'm adding together, have um, they both go into 15. Five three times and three five times. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the right side here by three over three, because three over three is essentially one, and any number times one is itself. This side here, I'm going to multiply by five over five. And what this allows me to do when I multiply across, get, multiply the bases here, 5, we multiply the numerator, then multiply the denominator, 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, and 5 times 3 is 15. The right side here, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, and 5 times 3 is 15, and we have the same base as what we, what we wanted. Now that we have the same base, when we add them together, we keep the base the same, but the numerator is what changes. We add the two numerator, numerator numbers. So negative 5 plus a negative 9, they're both negative, so it goes into the negative direction as negative 14. And so my final answer is negative 14 plus 15. 1 half plus negative 5 thirds. And 1 half plus a negative 5 thirds. And I want to add them together. Well, I need to find a common base, common denominator with 2 and 3. Since they don't have the same base, I can't add them together right away. Well, 2 and 3 both go into 6. 3 2 times and 2 3 times. So I'm going to take the negative 5 thirds and multiply it by 2 over 2, which is essentially just 1. The 1 half I'm going to multiply by 3 over 3, which again is just 1, right? And any number times 1 is itself. Well, we multiply, when we multiply fractions, we multiply across the numerator and across the denominator. 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, and 3 times 2 is 6. I now have the same base. Now that I have the same base, I can add the two numbers together. I keep the base the same here, which is 6. And I have 3 plus negative 10, 
Well, 3 plus a negative 10 comes out to be a negative 7. A negative 7, 6 is my final answer. 2 plus a negative 1 fourth. And I want to add them together. Well, if I have 2 plus a negative 1 fourth, I need to have the same base when I add fractions together. Okay? Well, well, 2 doesn't have a base, does it? But it actually does. Every whole number, every number has a base, and that base is 1, because 2 over 1 is the same thing as 2. So normally we, when we write it, we don't write the over 1, we just leave it as 2. But now I have a base of 2 over 1. Well, now I need to find the common denominator. Well, 1 and 4 both go into 4. 4 one time, so we multiply by 1 over 1, which it's pretty silly. We don't really need to. It doesn't change anything. But the 2 over 1, I can multiply that by 4 over 4. And what that allows me to do is when I to find a common denominator, 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 times 1 is 4. Plus, right side, well, negative 1 4 times 1 over 1. one thing, Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And 4 times 1 is 4. Well, look, I have the same base here, 4 and 4. But 8 fourths is the same thing as 2, right? 8 divided by 4 is 2. But now I've adapted that a whole number to make it a fraction of 2 over 1 to then make it a, uh, a larger fraction in a sense, right? Or a different fraction, but it's the same value, right? It's an adapted. So we have 8 fourths plus a negative 1 fourth. Well, the base is just the same. And now we have 8 plus, uh, 8 plus a negative 1, which is 8 minus 1, which is 7. And so my final answer is just 7 fourths here. negative one-fourth plus negative three-halves. And I wanted to add them together. Well, they're both negative, which is, which is nice. So we know that our final answer is going to be a larger negative number. <sighs> larger than both of these. Well, I need to find a common denominator. And so what number does four and two both go into? Think about it for a second. Eight, right? So four and two both go into eight. Two, uh, four times, and four, two times. So if I'm going to take the negative one-fourth, I can multiply it by 2 over 2. And here, multiply negative 3 half by uh, 4 over 4. And what that allows me to do, right, multiply by 2 over 2 and uh, 4 over 4 each side, is I'm going to adapt it because 2 over 2 is just 1 and 4 over 4 is 1. I'm multiplying it by 1. I'm adapting the uh, fraction, in a sense, to make it look a little different so they have the same denominator. 2 times negative 1 multiplied across the numer numerator is negative 2, and 2 times 4 is 8. And so negative 2 eighths is the same thing as negative 1 fourth, right? Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, and 2 times 4 is 8. And so what that tells us here is that negative 2 eighths is the same as negative 3 halves. We just adapted it to have a different base. But now they have the same base, and since the fractions have the same base, we can write that base out right here. And we just add across the numerator. Negative 2 plus a negative 12 is negative 14. And so we have negative 14 over 8. But I'm not done. Because that fraction can be simplified. Negative 14 and 8 both go in, uh, both are divisible, right? Divisible by 2. And so negative 14 and divided by 2 is 7, right? Negative 7. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. And so my final answer here is negative 7 fourths. Make sure if your final fraction can be simplified anymore, uh, do so. Minute math, minute math, when you need help to use minute math. Minute math, minute math, when you need help to use minute math. Minutemathtutor.com